states, in addition to the District of Columbia, currently have laws that legalize marijuana in some way. Most of these states have legalized the drug for medicinal purposes, but at least eight of these states and DC have legalized weed for recreational use, meaning that people can consume marijuana purely for enjoyment purposes. Earlier this year, Pew Research found that about six in 10 Americans say the use of marijuana should be legalized, reflecting a steady increase over the past decade. In April of last year, a Yahoo News and Marist College survey revealed that nearly 55 million Americans used marijuana at least once or twice in the past year. Close to 35 million are what the survey calls regular users or people who use marijuana at least once or twice a month. Considering how widespread the drug's use is and how liberal people are in their ideology toward weed, it's fascinating to see how often it's used to smear people, especially after they've been the victim of a wrongful police shooting. News broke last week indicating that Dallas cop Amber Geiger was arrested and charged with manslaughter in the shooting death of a 26 year old black man named Botham Shem Jean. Geiger told police that she mistook Jean's apartment for her own and thought he was a burglar when she saw his silhouette. She also claims that he ignored her verbal commands, so she opened fire, firing two shots and killed him. Whether or not there was malicious intent in the shooting is a big debate. And it's certainly a big debate among those who are following the story. But whether it was a mistake or not, there's no question that the shooting led to a wrongful death. But as often is the case, that nuance doesn't really seem to matter to some. There's this ongoing trend of smearing victims of police shootings and Fox 4, a local affiliate in North Texas, just provided the latest example. Fox 4 shared a tweet that included a story they published on their site with the headline indicating that marijuana was found in Jean's apartment after deadly shooting. Any reasonable person reading that would think that it automatically means that Jean was the pot user in the story, which shouldn't even matter by the way. We'll get back to that in just a moment. But it needs to be called out that the tweet is deceptive and misleading because if you dig just a tiny bit deeper, you'll find that there's no proof that the drug belonged to the victim in the first place. The inventory return shows two fired cartridge casings, one laptop computer, a black backpack with police equipment and paperwork, an insulated lunchbox, one black ballistic vest with police markings, 10.4 grams of marijuana in Ziploc bags, one metal marijuana grinder, two keys, and two used packages of medical aid. Now the document does not say where any of those items were located in the apartment or who they belong to. Yeah, meaning that they could have belonged to Geiger, we don't know yet. Fox 4 eventually changed its misleading headline, but kept the misleading part. The new and improved version reads, quote, lawyers disgusted by the release of search warrant showing marijuana found in Botham Jean's apartment. Jesus Christ, I mean, that headline is still terrible. And while there's a note saying that the article has been updated, there's no mention of why or how, which is information that responsible journalists typically include. In a press conference responding to the smear tactics, Botham Jean's mother explained that she will not sit back and allow the investigative focus to shift from the shooter to the victim. To have my son smeared in such a way, I think shows that there are persons who are really nasty, who are really dirty and are going to cover up for the devil, Amber Geiger. I don't know my son to be involved in such. And I want to find out whether the toxicology reports on, I, I, on Amber has been released because she was the murderer. That's right. I want to find out whether her apartment has been searched whether her car has been searched. And also, on the Saturday when we spoke to the Texas Ranger, he was saying that there was no reason in his mind that she ought to have been locked up. That's right. Jean's mother brings up several good points. Based on Geiger's own admission, she was the one who mistakenly walked into the wrong apartment, allegedly believing it was her own. 
She had been living in the building for more than two months at that point. If her account is true, why did she make that fatal mistake? Sean King also notes that Geiger keeps changing her story, which adds quite a bit of credibility to witnesses who dispute her recollection of that night. The two conflicting stories are noted in two different warrants related to the case. According to the Fort Worth Star Telegram, one version of events was outlined in an affidavit, which was written by Officer David Armstrong of the Texas Ranger Division. The content of that affidavit is based on what Geiger told him. In it, she says, quote, she inserted a unique door key with an electronic chip into the door key hole. The door, which was slightly ajar prior to Geiger's arrival, finally opened under the force of the key insertion. When she opened the door, Geiger said she saw Jean in the dark apartment. She had encountered a burglar, which was described as a large silhouette across the room in her apartment. That's when Geiger drew her firearm and gave verbal commands that were ignored by Jean. Now again, that's according to the affidavit. In it, she also says that she fired two shots with one fatally hitting Jean. However, a search warrant tells a conflicting story, alleging that an off-duty Dallas police officer who was wearing a full Dallas police uniform was attempting to enter the apartment number 1478 with a set of keys. An unknown male inside the apartment confronted the officer at the door. A neighbor stated he heard an exchange of words immediately followed by at least two gunshots. Again, that's according to the search warrant. While the arrest warrant describes Jean as being across the room, The search warrant says that he confronted Geiger at the door. It's not our job to investigate Geiger and her decision to shoot an innocent man in his own home. That's what investigators should be doing, rather than attempting to smear Jean with marijuana that might not belong to him in the first place. And even if it does turn out that Jean was a marijuana user, why would that possibly justify the senseless killing? We have presidents who have admitted to their own pot use, and they've done it on the record. It's not indicative of criminality, and the cops know that. It's shameful to see these tactics used time and time again by the very justice system that's supposed to be keeping us safe. You never have to miss another episode of No Filter by ringing the bell below. You'll get notified whenever we publish something new. And don't forget to join TYT and download the TYT Plus app today. Download our TYT Plus app on your iPhone or head over to tyt.com slash join.